six days a week, twice on Wednesdays and Saturdays, and perform the role of Juliet before his eyes. And as you know, it had always ended in tragedy where she would stab herself. The stage manager would come and pick up the baby and take him back to stage and watch her undress while she took off her clothes and wiped the blood off her thing and then said, let's go to dinner, darling, and took her baby out to dinner. That went on for three years until she got consumption and died in the back end of that stage. A woman who had watched her through the years and was very interested in her art, in her beauty, and in her child was there and took the baby, Edgar, home with her. Her name was Frances Allen. Her husband was John Allen. He was very rich. And when she brought him home, he told her he will not adopt that baby. He's the son of a waif, an actress which was the lowest rung on the social ladder, I suppose, in those days. But she raised him, educated him, and he fell in love with her just like he was in love with her mother, because his mother, because she was also very beautiful. She died of consumption when he was about 17, and John Allen threw him out of the house. There were other deaths of the women he loved in his life. And the last one was his wife, Virginia, and he wrote a poem about her. He took it to the publisher, and the publisher turned it down. He says, with a title like Virginia, what do you expect? It could be a college, it could be a state, I don't want it. He changed the title. So he went back, and the next day he came back with Annabelle Lee. It was many and many a year ago in a kingdom by the sea that a maiden there lived, whom you may know by the name of Annabelle Lee. And this maiden she lived with no other thought than to love and be loved by me. She was a child and I was a child in this kingdom by the sea, but we loved with a love that was more than love, I and my Annabelle Lee, with a love the winged seraphs of heaven coveted her and me. And this was the reason. And this was the reason many years ago in this kingdom by the sea that a wind came out of the cloud by night chilling my Annabelle Lee so that her high-born kinsmen came and bore her away from me to shut her up in a sepulcher in the kingdom by the sea. But the angels not half so happy in heaven when envying her and me. Yes, this was the reason so long ago in this kingdom by the sea that a wind came out of a cloud chilling and killing my beautiful Annabelle Lee. But when it, our love, it was a love that was stronger than the love of many who were older than we, of some who were far wiser than we. But neither the angels in heaven above nor the demons down under the sea can ever dissever my soul from the soul of the beautiful Annabelle Lee. So come the moonbeams that keep bringing me dreams or the stars in, uh, that rise while I see the bright eyes of my beautiful Annabelle Lee. And then, so now that come the night tide, I lie down by the side of my darling, my darling, my life and my bride in her sepulcher there by the sea, in her tomb by the side of the sea. I'm gonna go to a really serious poet whose name was Emily Dickinson. She was born in Amherst, Massachusetts, and a very likable, lovely young lady who attended the Amherst Seminary for Ladies for her education. Emily 
Emily graduated with honors from her class, and she was a very, very intelligent and wrote some extraordinary poetry. So when she came home, she took a couple of her the most recent poems to their, her minister, and he read them over, and, and she came back and said, what do you think? And he said, you ought to give it up. They aren't worth a damn, in effect. So she went back to her home and became more or less of a recluse. And while a recluse, she wrote a 1,800 poems. And instead of putting a name on them, she put a number on them and put them into a trunk. And they never saw the light of day until their, her relatives settled their squabbles over her estate. And they were published about 1900. She was born in 1830 and died in 1886. A prolific poet and probably the most eloquent poet, a female poet in the English language. I have picked two to give you an example of the pithy and striking images that she creates in a few words. These are two quatrains each, four lines in each four verses in each uh, quatrain, two quatrains, there's eight lines each poet. And the first one is called The Bustle in a House. The bustle in a house the morning after death is solemnest of industries enacted upon earth. The sweeping up the heart, the putting love away, we do not need it anymore until eternity. The second one is of a lighter nature, but more philosophical perhaps. He ate and drank the precious words. He ate and drank the precious words. His spirit grew robust. He knew no more that he was poor nor that his frame was rust. He danced through the dingy days, yet this bequest of wings was but a book. What liberty a loosened spirit brings. The next poem, one that I like, and I think it's familiar to everyone because it is so expressive, particularly when you understand the circumstances of the author who was a lifelong diabetic. The doctors determined it would be necessary to amputate his left leg above the knee. He wrote a poem called Before. Hardly anyone had ever heard it when he wrote it, nor since. But after the leg was amputated, he wrote Invictus, his name was William Ernest Henley, born in 1850, died in 1907, not too long after the amputation. Invictus. Out of the night that covers me, black as a pit from pole to pole, I thank whatever gods there be for my unconquerable soul. In the fell clutch of circumstance, I have not winced nor cried aloud. Under the bludgeonings of chance, my head is bloody, but unbowed. In this place of wrath and tears looms but the horror of the shade, and yet the menace of the years finds and shall find me unafraid. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishment the scroll, I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. One of the poets I've chosen from the early 20th century is Robert Frost. During an August night, which was a sweltering night, in, even in New England, <clears throat> He worked to complete a poem, which was due the next morning.